inspiration. That's it. That's that's the bit. That's the intro. Now I gotta find my dice. Hello Acolytes, welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. Inspiration in Dungeons and Dragons has looked one way for a long time. The DM rewarding you with a chance to roll with advantage at any point you would like, or even share this advantage with another player. And even though this is a great way to promote narrative and role play, there are many DMs who don't use it, use something else, or or don't like inspiration in general. Inspiration is supposed to feel like you're beating all odds or that your characters are pushing themselves to the limit and just beyond it. Perhaps your table just hasn't found that one mechanic that helps promote this feeling. Or maybe you've done it so long that you just need a change. So I'll be going over 10 different ways to do inspiration that I've personally done at my table and I've seen others do. My hope is that you'll be inspired to make it your own. First up is using other dice. Usually you give your players a d20, but what if you give them a d4, a d6, or a d10, depending on the situation? And they would add the total to the dice rolled, much how the mechanics of the spell bless or the bard inspiration mechanics work. If you do have a bard in your party, you can have them almost help out in this way of giving inspiration, or you can tweak it just a little bit. Possibly assign different numbered dice to different milestones. Perhaps they get a d4 inspiration if they land the last hit in a fight, or get a d6 inspiration when they uncover a secret from an NPC. They could get a d10 inspiration if they were successful in a skill that they were not proficient in, or a d12 inspiration if they completed a personal goal in the game. As a DM, you're giving them bigger dice depending on the magnitude of the task at hand. And for for those really big ones, you can even have them roll a d20 and instead of picking the higher result, you add one result to the other one. If there's no bard in your group, you can have the inspiration scale up as they level up. This is to not step on the toes of that class if you don't want to, but the DM would be playing the bard in this way. Another method we could look at is the players knowing their numbers before they even roll for inspiration. In method two, we take a note from the Chronergy wizard and have pre-rolls. In this way, when you give the d20 inspiration to a player, they immediately roll it and know the number on the die. Let's say you give two players inspiration and one rolls a two and another one rolls a 16. Now having that number in front of them, they can choose whenever to switch out the result on their inspiration die with one that they rolled in game. If you want, you could even have them sabotage an enemy's roll by switching out their die with theirs. Or you can just keep it personal and they have to expend this inspiration die before they get another one. Now the player that rolls a two needs to figure out which roll he's going to give up in order to be open for another inspiration. But in many ways, you don't have to be tied down to dice when you give out your inspiration. You can do what I do and use playing cards. What I do is I give each player one card face down. They don't know what the card is, but they know that when they flip it up, they add the total to the dice roll. All face cards are plus 10 and aces and jokers are automatic crits. I personally love this method because it does add a lot of mystery and risk to inspiration, but also does a lot to help the players succeed. And in your game, a flat plus 10 or an automatic crit may be too much for you, but to me, nothing's worse than using inspiration and just rolling another two. But one thing's for sure, if they don't use the inspiration by the end of the session, they don't carry over to the next one. And if you don't like how I do it, there's a lot of different ways that you can use playing cards. You could have a hand of cards that the players choose from. That way you can control what's in your hand. Then if you wanted to add a luck mechanic, you could have low cards even do something detrimental. Or you could hand the player a full hand of cards, and depending on if they have a pair, two pair, flush, straight, the better the hand, the more successful a series of checks might be. But I think you get the point, there's a lot that you could do with that. Now the cool thing about playing cards is there's actually some third party resources that you can use, some specifically made for Dungeons and Dragons. This third party resource from Nord Games called Critical Hits is one of the many possibilities. In no way is this video sponsored by them, but I do enjoy their products. Let's say someone gets inspiration and you give them one of these cards. Let me read off some examples of things that they 
they might be able to do. One option gives them an extra attack of opportunity that they could use. Another one increases the area of a spell by 15 feet. Another one gives them the ability on their next hit to deafen or blind the enemy. And another one gives you advantage if you wanted to grapple somebody. And another one allows you to place a lingering injury on an enemy that they continue to take damage from. But there's a lot that you can do with inspiration than just giving them flat advantage or a bonus to something. But more on that later. But you can find your own decks, find generators online, or create your own. Perhaps in some games, it might even make sense to have a wild magic surge table that you roll on the surge table whenever someone gets an inspiration. Now, before I get to the next method, I do want to thank my patrons. The whole reason I made this video was because of their interest and choosing this topic. If you think my channel adds value to you and you want to support me in a similar way, consider checking it out and getting behind the scenes perks, copies of my video scripts, and even one-on-one -on -one time with me. You can find it linked below. But now that we've covered dice and playing cards, let's talk about the point method. This method includes a currency system that your players can cash in for prizes. They might cash in one point to re-roll the dice and use the new results, or two points to roll with advantage. If they save up five points, they could add a flat plus five to any roll. Or if you wanted to be a little bit meta, you could even have them spend points to find certain items when they go into dungeons. Or they could buy piety from the mythic Odysseys of Theros book. Or dark gifts from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Or perhaps there are other unique gifts that make sense in your homebrew world that you can give them. You could even make the points fun using poker chips or candy. With this method, you might be giving out inspiration more often. So in order to keep track, you might want to wait till the end of the session to give them all out. You can look back on the session and reward points as you see fit. This helps you from having to constantly think of one more thing to do as you're DMing. With the next method, we keep the randomness alive and get a big bag of colorful things. With the color method, you could have a bag of beans, stones, or bottle caps. But the goal is different items that represent different numbers. When a player gets inspiration they can draw from the bag and if let's say they draw a blue they get a plus two if they draw a yellow it's plus four and if they draw a red it's plus six the great thing about this method is that they can mix and match and stack when needed if they roll low they might feel impressed to use a yellow and a red together to get their points up or if they just need a little boost they might use two blues that they have and keep their red and yellow for later I think another fun element would allow the players to trade during long rests. Reflecting some of the positive interactions that they might have with each other as they share stories or backstory. Giving each other inspiration as they increase camaraderie within the team. But if you as a DM don't want to mess with points, playing cards, or dice, you could leave it entirely up to the players. With the player's choice, they each have an inspiration at the start of the session, but they themselves can't use it. It is up to them to reward their fellow players with inspiration when they see fit. Again, they might give it to another player if another player opens up to them about their backstory. Or if they think another player did particularly well in a fight, they'll compliment them and give them an inspiration. This method does two things. One, takes inspiration and that responsibility off your back. And two, creates interaction and teamwork without you doing much either. Players will obviously want to optimize as much as they can, so inspiration can reflect party unification. And if one isn't enough, you can choose any number to give your players at the start of the session that they could use. Maybe each player has two playing cards or five inspiration points, or even have an amount of inspiration equal to their proficiency bonus that recharges next time they get back to town. But if you want wanted to make things even simpler and remove the hand of chance, you can have the inspiration be an automatic success, basically giving your players a legendary resistance. Knowing that there currently is no possible way for players currently to get legendary resistance, this is one way to do it. If they do particularly good at something or roleplay their bonds or flaws really well, give them this legendary resistance to use in the next fight. If you think that's too strong, you can just limit it again to skill checks only. If they're in a social situation and want their character to have a sudden 
epiphany, they could have a sudden flash of genius as they incite a character. But this allows your characters full control over their inspiration, flashes of genius, etc. So they can narrate what they think their character would be best at. And one another thought that I just had is you could even limit these to the skills that they're proficient or expertise in. Now for the next method, we continue to leave it in the hands of the players. However, this time we have a consequence. Spurs of genius and overcoming odds can sometimes be very exhausting and even take a lot of adrenaline to do. So in this way, they have to use a hit dice for their inspiration. This reflects them being successful because of the adrenaline that's being pumped through their bodies. So whenever they do use an inspiration, that means that's one less hit die that they get to use their next short rest. If they use too many, say the amount equal to their proficiency bonus, you could even give them exhaustion. Resting still helps rebuild that dice pool, but this way it gives another element for your players to play with. But now let's talk about other things that you can spend your inspiration dice on. If you roll or flip playing cards, consider adding the following as inspiration options. Increased damage, increased saving throw DC, increased movement speed, adding or subtracting from initiative, temporary hit points, or increased AC for a turn. If you aren't rolling and you're using spell points or just using inspiration as is, consider these. Recharging spell slots and abilities, temporary expertise, extra reactions, using cantrips or spells that they don't currently have prepared, using actions or reactions as bonus actions or vice versa, legendary actions to use when it's not their turn, or stabilization when they go unconscious. But these are just a few of many, many options that you could use D&D Inspiration for. So if there are some that I missed or that you use a completely different method, I'd love to hear about it. So please add them to the comments below. If you enjoy what I do here, tune in next week as I continue my Better Classes series with The Rogue, where I go over other class tropes to make your rogues unique and they don't always have to be sneaky. And this video I'm actually very excited for. So I appreciated everyone's patience as we navigated the slow algorithm of YouTube over the holidays. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D &D and make the world a better place, both on and off your tables. See you in the next one.